Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney and welcome to From the Rabbi's Bookshelves. This is the beginning of a three-part series on the theological thought of Rabbi Dr. Eliezer Berkowitz. And in many ways this could have been the very first of our series because he's had more impact on me than I think any other thinker of the past century or beyond. Rabbi Berkowitz was born in Hungary in 1908. He was educated there at first and then he went to Berlin. He joined the university and received his PhD in philosophy from Berlin University and also joined the Orthodox Rabbinical Seminary in uh, Berlin led by Rabbi Hildesheimer first of all and his own teacher eventually Rabbi Yechil Yaakov Weinberg and he became both a student and later a professor, a teacher at the Hildesheimer Seminary. Under pressure of the Nazi rise to power he moved from Berlin to Leeds in England, was a rabbi in Leeds, then came to Australia after the Second World War and was a rabbi of the Central Synagogue here in Sydney. He moved from Sydney to Boston and eventually became the Professor of Philosophy at the Hebrew Theological College in Skokie in Chicago and then made Aliyah and died in Israel in 1992. He published three major works on Jewish theology in addition to other smaller works. One on a Jewish theology in general, the second on a philosophy of halakha of Jewish law and the third on Holocaust theology. The first is God, Man and History and this is his general work of Jewish theology. It's a robust defense of an orthodox traditional approach to a Jewish way of life and Jewish way of thought, and it builds up from first principles a traditional Jewish outlook. In particular, he concentrates on the concept of the encounter, the encounter between God and humanity. Rabbi Berkowitz believes that nothing in Judaism makes sense except through the lens of an encounter between God and humanity at Mount Sinai. There must be a God that although entirely transcendent and separate from anything else in the universe, can also be in dialogue with the universe, and in particular in dialogue with human beings. You must be able to talk to human beings, to command and to be in relationship with them. And above all, I think in Berkowitz's thought to show that he cares about humanity. There is a deeply intense sense of connection between God and humanity, which is expressed through care, and that care is expressed through command. As he says, God commands us because he loves us. There's also a very interesting critique in the book against a mystical notion of Judaism. Now, mysticism has been a very powerful force in Jewish thought for many centuries, even millennia, and is still very powerful today. This book, and Rabbi Berkowitz in general, is a powerful alternative view to mysticism because Berkowitz believes that we have a relationship with God. He believes that that must be based on two independent parties. We can't simply be subsumed into God, otherwise there can be no relationship. And he says that mysticism is all about being subsumed in God, that we become, as it were, at one with God. He said this is not the case. We are separate from God, and that's why we can be in relationship with him. Let me read you this uh, critique, this anti-mystical statement by Robert Berkowitz. The encounter, that is say, between God and humanity, should not be confused with the mystical communion. The mystic's goal is the surrender of personal existence, his desire is to merge himself in the one, to pour himself into God, to be drawn into the all. The mystic finds his fulfillment in the extinction of his dignity through being consumed by the absolute, by being consumed by God. For him, individuality is a burden and a shame. Only the one or the all is real, and every form of separateness from it is an unworthy shadow existence. In the encounter, on the other hand, the original separateness is affirmed. In fact, it is granted its highest dignity by being sustained by God. The encounter may occur because the individual personality is safeguarded. Where there is the encounter, there is fellowship. And fellowship is the very opposite of the mystical surrender of man's identity in an act of communion. Judaism is not a non-mystical religion. Judaism is essentially non-mystical because it is religion. The mystical communion is the end of all relationship, and therefore the end of all religion. So a very powerful and bold statement that you can have religion or you can have mysticism, but you can't have both. Judaism is essentially non-mystical because, according to it, God addresses himself to man, and he awaits man's response to the address. God speaks and man listens. God commands and man obeys. Man searches and God allows himself to be found. Man entreats and God answers. In the mystical union, however, there are no words and no law, no search and no recognition because there is no separateness. 
So Judaism isn't just a religion that happens to be non-mystical. Because it is a religion of relationship, it must be non-mystical. And that is uh, Berkowitz's basic claim. We are a religion because we are based on an encounter with God, and that must include separateness from God. Thanks for joining.